If we have a function, like I do here, the payment function, and we know the answer that we want it to pull out for us, like let's say I can afford a $500 a month payment, Solver will give us the answer that we want without necessarily knowing what the inputs are. And the inputs that contribute to this formula are these three right here. My monthly payments based upon the total amount of the loan, the interest rate, and also calculated in there is the term of the loan over 50 months. So if I want it to be $500, of course, if I come up here and type in 500, it doesn't change any of these, so that doesn't make sense. Let me go ahead and hit undo. So to get the value that I want, I'll use solver to not overwrite the uh, payment function, but to say this is the end result that I want by changing one of these or all three of these values. Now, if you watched the previous training video on GoalSeek, there are two major differences between GoalSeek and solver. First of all is that GoalSeek only allows one variable. So if I want $500 to be my monthly payment, I can only choose one of these to change. Where solver, you can have two or more variables. So I could say, well, my interest rate and months, or my principal amount and interest rates, they can change to get me the $500 a month payment that I want. Now, working in tandem with that is that I don't have to leave it willy-nilly. In other words, I could say, look, the principal amount, I can have a constraint added to it saying it can be between twelve dollars and $18,000. The interest rate has to be anything less than 7%. You can't do that with GoalSeek. GoalSeek has no constraints. It's all open. So if you have constraints on any one of these variables and it's two or more variables, then go ahead and use Solver. Now let me click off in a blank area. Solver by default is not added anywhere up here on your ribbon. When it is added, it'll add it to the data tab over here in uh, its own group. In other words, the what if analysis is not going to be here. So to add Solver, just come up here and click on the File tab, go down to Options, go to the Add-ins, then come down here and click on Go, and there it is, Solver Add-in. Click OK, and boom. Adds the Analysis group, and there's Solver. Go ahead and select the function cell that we're going to solve to get the result that we want of $500, and click on Solver. So I've got my set objective, which is going to be this cell. And what do I want it set to? Well, I want it set to the value of $500. So to get 500, what cells will we allow Solver to make changes to so the calculation can come out right and get us the result of 500? Well, those cells are going to be these three right here that contribute to the function, the payment function. And it's going to be, and I'm going to go ahead and type it in, D3. I mean, there's D3 there, comma, and then below that's going to be D4, comma, D5. I'm going to go ahead and click Add, and the moment I click Add, it says, do you have any constraints on these three cells? In other words, do I want to go ahead and say, to get the $500, I also don't want to uh, have the term of the loan be more than 50 months, maybe between, let's say, 40 and 50. don't want anything to be less than 40, so to go ahead and do that, the cell reference is going to be this one right here for the 50. And you've got your, well, less than or equal to, equal to or greater than or equal to, in any case, we'll do less than or equal to, and we'll type in 50. Okay, click Add. We can do it again because we can set more constraints on the same cell going the other way. So it has to be less than or equal to 50, but we want it to be greater than or equal to, let's say, 40. So we'll flip that around, greater than or equal to 40. So between 40 and 50, those are the constraints for that cell. Then go ahead and click Add. Any other constraints? Well, how about the interest rate? Let's say that the interest rate cannot be greater than 5%. So this cell has to be less than or equal to. Now you can put as many constraints on these cells as you want, but don't get ridiculous. I mean, you can imagine if you put all these constraints on all three of them that are so tight that Solver like actually chokes on it, it'll do the best that it can to come out with the result that you want. But hey, the more freedom you give it, the better or more accurate the result. But nonetheless, go ahead and put the constraints on there that you need. When you're done, if I click Add, it's blank. So if I click OK and I'm finished, it says, no, you can't leave these blank. But if I'm finished, instead of clicking OK, click Cancel, and it pulls it back up. And there are my constraints on those uh, two cells. It's got to be less than or equal to 5%. The interest rate and the uh, term of the loan has to be greater than or equal to 40, but less than or equal to 50. Everything looks good. Just go ahead and click Solve. Now this little window pops up, it solves it, and you can see behind it, it gives me the end result value without overriding the formula, $500 a month. So the term of the months was between 40 and 50, right? So it said, okay, we'll keep it at 50, 
and it has to be less than or equal to 5%, which it did. So it went right to the extreme of my uh, constraints at the top, and after it did that, it said, oh, I still have to get them at $500 a month, so let's give them a greater loan amount here of 22000 which is well beyond what I originally had. So I can either say, keep the solver solution, if I like it, in which case it'll stay the way it is, or click cancel, and it'll revert back to what I originally had, 15000 6%, 50 months, and then the payment of three thirty nine eighty one. And then just do it over again until you actually get the results that you feel comfortable with. Now, if you do it over again, click Solver. It's going to have everything that you punched in. So if you don't want that, you can go ahead and select it and delete it. In fact, if we just delete the interest rate and click Solve, well, it kept it at 6%. The principal amount isn't uh, as high. And the months is between 40 and 50, so not bad. In any case, you can keep tinkering with it. Thanks for watching. Hey, as a quick reminder, if you like my video, please give it a thumbs up. You can also click on me and subscribe to my channel to get notified of the latest videos. And for great specials on my products, please see the description below this video.